Hello, welcome. Today we're going to discuss mesh analysis again and we're going to introduce the concept of super mesh. If you recall from our previous discussion on mesh analysis we looked at circuit networks and all the circuit networks we looked at last time had resistors and voltage sources in them. If you notice in our previous discussion on mesh analysis none of the circuits contained current sources. And that's because a current source does give us a little bit of problem and therefore we need this, this new concept of super mesh. So before we get started, let's review what mesh analysis is. Mesh analysis is a systematic application of KVL to solve circuits. So first step, determine the number of mesh, and we'll call that number M, determine the number of the mesh that we have in the circuit. Remember, a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other smaller loops within it. Next, we need to define mesh currents, and they're going to be in M of them, and define them consistently. They all need to go the same direction, or things aren't going to work out. Next, take each of those M mesh, and we need to write KVL around each of the mesh. Remember, a mesh is a loop, so there is a KVL equation for each mesh. And then more done that, we have M equations and M unknowns, and we will solve, and when we solve that, we will find M mesh currents. Those are the currents that are flowing in the mesh. That may or may not be the currents that you're interested in, but with the M mesh currents uh, found, you can find any current you want, and then from that you can find voltage or power or energy or anything else that excites you. So let's just dive in and do an example. So the first example here is a circuit and we see in this one it does have a current source. So mesh analysis, first step in mesh analysis, determine the number of mesh. And if you look at this, it looks like a window pane and the, the number of panes will be the number of mesh. So M equals 2. So I will expect two equations and two unknowns. And so we need to define, step 2, define our mesh currents consistently, so they need to be all going the same direction, so I always do clockwise, and so we'll call this mesh current I1, and then there will be a mesh current over in the second mesh, and we'll call this I2. So now we can go and write KVL for each of the mesh. Proceed around each of the mesh and write the KVL equation. So minus 42, and then we're moving this way through the 6 ohm resistor, so I'm looking for the voltage drop 6 I1, and then we come to the current source. This is a 3 ampere current source, and we're writing KVL, so we need the voltage across the current source. And what is the voltage across a current source? Well, we don't know. It's a current source. This current source is going to have 3 amperes flowing through it no matter what the voltage across it is. And it's going to maintain 3 amperes. The voltage across the current source is going to be whatever is required to make the rest of the circuit happy. So we don't know the voltage. There is no relationship between the 3 amperes and the voltage across the current source. So since we don't know what it is, we will just define a variable and we'll call it V question mark and then keep on going. So plus V question mark and that equals 0. Next we do KVL around the second mesh. Starting in the top, we get 4 I2 minus 10, and then we're back to the current source again. We do the voltage across the current source, and again, we don't know what it is, and if we look at it, we see we've already defined V question mark, so we get minus V question mark, and that equals 0. So here we have two equations because we have two mesh, but we have three unknowns. The third unknown comes from the fact that we have this current source in between the two mesh. And so since the current source gives rise to an extra unknown, we need to use the current source itself to give us another relationship so we can solve. And so we look at the current source and we think, well, what can it, what can it tell us? Well, we know that it is a three ampere current source. There is three amperes flowing up through this branch. Why? Because the current source is going to maintain three amperes in the upward direction. So I know that there's going to be three amperes flowing upward, and what is the current flowing upward? Well, I2 flows up, and then the current I1 is counteracting it. So we know that the current flowing upward in the branch will be I2 opposed by or counteracted by I1, I2 minus I1, and that must equal to 3 because it's a 3 ampere current source. And so we will have the system of equations, three equations and three unknowns. And if you go and solve these, you will find that I1 equals 4 amperes, and you'll get I2 equals 7 amperes. And now once you have these two currents, we can find any 
current in the circuit and any voltage in the circuit through KVL, KCL, Ohm's Law, and then you can find anything you're looking for. Okay, well let's, we haven't really talked about super mesh, so let's take the same problem and let's bring up the concept of super mesh. So take the same problem, let's back up a bit, and so we have determined the number of mesh in the circuit, M equals 2. We've drawn our mesh currents, and we have written our two KVL equations around our mesh. So what is the soup, this super mesh that you're talking about? Well, here's, here's the motivation for it. So we have the two equations. We got the KVL1 equation, and we have the KVL2 equation that we just came with, up with in the previous example. And so Remember from algebra, we are allowed to take two equations and a system of equation and systems of equations and add them together. So let's take these two equations and add them together because algebra says we can do that. So we have a new so minus 42 plus 6i1 plus v question mark plus vi2 minus 10 minus V question mark equals zero. And if you go back and look at this equation, we see that the minus V question mark and the plus V question mark cancel each other out. And we are left with this equation, minus 42 plus 6I1 plus 4I2 minus 10 equals zero. Well, if you stop and think about it, we can come up with that equation by creating this idea of a super mesh. And so the super mesh is, since we have a current source, we have a current source in the middle, we can't find the voltage across it. We don't know the voltage across it. So as we start going around this first mesh, we see that there's a current source. We don't know the voltage. So let's just proceed and, and grab the next mesh. And so we now have this is a super mesh. Okay, it's not really a mesh because it has loops within it, but we'll call it a super mesh. It is the two mesh that share the current source that have been combined together. And if you were to write KVL for this equation, if you follow along with me, we'll see we get minus 42 plus 6I1 plus 4I2 minus 10 and now we're back where we started from, equals zero. So this equation that you get by adding the two regular mesh equations together, KVL equations, when you add those together, you get the equation that results from the so-called super mesh, which is the two mesh combined together, avoiding the current source. Well, now we have one equation and two unknowns, so we're still stuck. And again, since the current source causes the tr problem, we need to go back and look at it and say, you need to help us out. And of course, we see that the current I2 being counteracted by I1 must be equal to the current source, which is three. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. And again, you solve and you'll find I1 is four amperes and you'll discover I2 is seven amperes. And how do we get these answers? Well, you do back substitution or matrix inversion or any other method that you want in order to come up with that answer, whatever is the most convenient for you. All right, so let's go to a, another example. So now we have a circuit here. It's a little more complicated. And we look at it, and immediately the first thing to do is step one, how many mesh do we have? And we look at it, we see three window panes, and so we know we have three mesh. So step two, define them consistently. So there's a mesh current I1. There's another current around through here, I2. And we have another mesh current around here, I3. So we define our mesh currents consistently. Next step, write the KVL equations for each mesh. And so starting around mesh and KVL, mesh 1. First we have minus 7. And then when we get to this resistor, we have plus 1, and we have the current I1 being counteracted by I2. And then next is, well, it's a current source. And so I don't know its voltage. So we need to create a super mesh at this point. And so the super mesh is going to be the first mesh. And then it needs to be combined with the third one in order to miss that troubling current source that we don't know its voltage. And so the super mesh will be the one 
in this case how it's going to be the 1, 3 super mesh. So plus 7, plus 1, I1 minus I2, and then next we're looking for the voltage this way, and that's going to be 3, I3 minus I2, and then we're looking for this voltage, plus 1, and that's simply I3, and then we are back where we started from, and that must equal to 0. So that's the mesh equation, the KVL equation for node 1 and node 3. So now we can write the KVL equation for mesh 2, and that simply will be 2I2, there's the voltage there, plus, and now we want the voltage plus on the left, minus on the right across the 3 ohm resistor, so we'll get 3, in this case it's going to be I2 minus I3, which opposes it, and then I'm looking for the voltage plus on the bottom, minus on top, and that's going to be plus 1 I3, and then it's opposed by I1. Again, I always go clockwise with my mesh currents, and I proceed around my loops clockwise, therefore I always get the terms uh, the, the, the loop mesh current that I'm talking about is the first term. So now we have our, our equations. These are all the mesh equations we can write. And again, we can look real quick and make sure that everything's okay. We know the, this, this 1 ohm resistor appears in 2 mesh, and we see it is right there. And then we see the... Uh, and I see a mistake that we've made right there. This is I2 minus I1, that's why we go back and do this, and I see the term is right there where it belongs, and then we have the 3 ohm resistor appears in 2, and so we see that term there, and there it's negative. So we have the terms that are appear in two different mesh, and they see they're negatives of each other, and we've caught one of our mistakes, which is why we do that. So we have two equations, we have three unknowns, and so why did we lose an equation? Well, we lost an equation because of the 7 amp source. And so the 7 amp source needs to help us out. And so how does it help us out? We know that the current I1 being counteracted by I3, which is the current going down through this branch, has to be equal to 7. That must be true since it's a current source. Now we have three equations and three unknowns. And we can now solve the circuit. And when you solve this circuit, you will find the answers. I1 is going to be 9 amperes. I2 is going to be 2.5 amperes. And I3 will be 3 amperes. Excuse me, I3 will be 2 amperes when you solve that. Alright, look at one more example. This example is the same circuit and a few of the elements have been swapped out. So, step one, mesh analysis. How many mesh do we have? M equals three. Step two, write our mesh currents consistently. So there's I1, he'll be mesh current I2, and here will be mesh current I3. I do want to point out real quick, let's do KVL for mesh two. KV, mesh 2 has not changed from the previous problem, so the equation will not change. We have 2I2 plus 3, and that's I2 minus I3, plus 1 I2 minus I1. That should be the exact same equation as before because that particular mesh did not change. So now let's go and start writing the KVL equation for mesh 1. And we start off right over here on the left, as always, and we get ready to go, and we see we have a current source, a current source. So before right out of the gate, we can't write the voltage because we have a current source in our way. We have a 15 amp current source, and I don't know the voltage across it. So immediately you think, well, hey, we need to write a super mesh. We need to grab this mesh and the other mesh that is, contains the 15 amp source and combine them together. But you see that there is no other mesh off to the left. So what do we do? Well, it actually turns out this is really, really easy because we don't have to worry about writing the KVL equation because we know, according to the circuit diagram, that the current flowing upwards is 15 amps. And that equals I1. When you have a current source on an exterior branch when you're doing mesh analysis, the current source itself tells you immediately what 
the, the current is, in this case, 15 amps. 15 amps is I1. So we're ready to go. But now, there's nothing else to write because we don't have an equation. Obviously, we have, if we, we can't write the equation over for I, th for the mesh 3 because we have th this current source, which is in the way. And so if we tried to make a super mesh out of 1 and 3, we're back to the 15 amp source again and we're stuck. So what do we do? Well, we have to start looking at what we have. We have two equations and three unknowns. So why are we missing an equation? Well, we're missing an equation now because of the controlled current source. We're not missing an equation. This, the 15 amp source did not cause us to miss an equation. It actually gave us an equation. It gave us this nice, beautiful, easy equation right there. And so we need an equation. We're missing an equation now because we of this current source. And so we need to create an equation from it. So the controlled source has to give us an equation. And that is the current going up. And the current going up is going to be I3, I3 minus I1. That's the current going upward. And we know the current going upward is 1 ninth Vx. Remember, this controlled source that we have here, this, these diamond-shaped sources, don't let, them, don't let them bother you or freak you out. It is simply a current source. There's a current going up. How much current goes up? 1 ninth Vx. And so the current going up, 1 ninth Vx, also has to be I3, the current going up, opposed by I1, the current going down. So now we have three equations in well, now four unknowns. And so we need to find wh where did the fourth unknown come from? What well, comes from the value of Vx? So Vx is written there, but where does Vx come from? Well, Vx is the voltage plus on the left, minus on the right. So now the definition of Vx needs to give us another one. What is Vx? Well, Vx is the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor. Well, how do I find a voltage across the resistor? Well, it's Ohm's law. It's 3 ohms times the current. And so in this case, we're looking for the current, which is going to the right, entering the positive terminal, passive sign convention. So three times the current going to the right. And what is the current going to the right? Well, it's the current I3, and it's been opposed by the current I2. So now we have four equations in our four unknowns, and then we can solve. And when we do this, when you do it through whatever your favorite method is, you'll get I1 is 15 amps, which we already knew because that is very obvious over here. You'll discover that I2 equals 11 amperes, and then I3 is 17 amperes when you solve this system of equations. So really this is how we apply mesh analysis when we have voltage, excuse me, current sources in our circuit because we're, mesh analysis is a systematic application of KVL. We're trying to sum up all the voltages around a loop, around the mesh, and we don't know the voltages across current sources. So when we have a current source of mesh analysis, we have to do something else, create the super mesh, and go about our business. Of course, the, creating the super mesh means we lose a KVL equation, and then the current source has to give us back some information. Again, one last time, to commit to memory, mesh analysis, four steps. Determine the number of mesh in the circuit, M. Define the M mesh currents and do it consistently so everything works out. If you don't break the mesh currents the same direction, it's not going to work. Next, write KVL around each of the mesh. You'll get M equations and M unknowns, and then you'll have to solve. And when you'll find the M unknowns, that's the M mesh currents. Of course, when you have current sources, you may have to do a little bit of some super mesh and, and get a little bit more creative, but they all work the same way. So that's mesh analysis, and remember the restriction. Mesh analysis only applies to planar circuits. If you cannot draw the circuit on a piece of paper uh, completely, if it pops off the page, then it's not going to work. So your planar circuits are circuits you can draw on the page. Mesh analysis, a great technique. Commit it to memory. We'll use it a lot. See you next time.